Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's so good to see your smiling faces this morning. And we're so glad to have you at New Hope Baptist Church this morning. Uh, friends, enemies, members, visitors, uh, whomever you would consider yourself to be, we're just glad to have you here today. And we're honored that you took time out of your busy schedule to be in God's house today. And uh, we praise the Lord for it. And uh, this morning, I'm going to ask Brother Carl Jones if he would please open our service in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all of us. We have eternal life, Lord. I pray to believe a brother coming this morning to deliver the message. Let's open up our hearts and our ears. Receive this message. Go out into the world. Bless the world with us. Amen. If you're a man, please remain standing. <laughs> it looks like you all guessed for it well. Most of you guessed correctly. Some of you are not sure, we can talk about that later. I have three announcements I want to direct this morning to the men. The first one is, has to do with food. Amen. And that is, this coming Saturday, we're going to have a men's breakfast here at the church at 7.30 in the morning on Saturday. So uh, bring your appetite, bring yourself, uh, bring a friend, and we'll have a good time. And we got some uh, cooks that I can just tell by looking at them that they must be good cooks. And uh, so I know that you'll enjoy that. That's this coming Saturday. Good job, Brother Tony. That's this coming Saturday at 7.30. Secondly, we have been invited to participate in the Iron Man 2013 Men's Retreat, which is April the 18th through the 20th. There's flyers on the back table, so if you want to get more information about that, um, it's just up here in uh, at Lakeview Baptist Assembly. But the cost is $75 per person, and you must... RSVP by February the 8th. Do you have to have the money by the 8th? No. No. Just okay. sign up. No. You just have to be signed up on the back table and committed. <laughs> there's a, uh, Never mind. There's a bass tournament Thursday night. Oh, okay. The Thursday night before there's a bass tournament. And uh, there's some other activities with the flyers back there. And you can read about it for yourself in the bulletin. Lastly, <laughs> Lastly, immediately following this service, if, uh, if you're a man that would be willing to help us with some organization concerning ushering, if you would stay, stay by for a brief meeting with uh, Brother John and Brother Carl right up here after the morning service, and you can help us with the uh, ushering responsibilities on Sundays, uh, then uh, please keep that in mind immediately after this service is over. Thank you. You may be seated then. <laughs> we have several announcements, and I'm not going to read all of them to you, but we do want to mention a few of them. Now, for those of you that use uh, that access the live event on the U version on Sunday mornings during the message, uh, <clears throat> This morning, if you're trying to connect to our Wi-Fi, you'll have to use the password Shamrock. So the password is Shamrock if you're trying to access our Wi-Fi, and then uh, use the uh, Uversion app on your uh, mobile device. The church membership class will be starting Sunday, February the 24th. Sunday, February the 24th. Brother Tony has done a little revamping of it and a little reorganization of it. But if you are interested in what we do here, how it is we do what we do here, uh, church membership, what is it that it means? Uh, when you join the church, what is it that you're joining? <coughs> Excuse me. Just what is, what is going on with the whole church membership thing? If you want to be a part Often people say, hey, I, I want to be a part, I want to do something, where can I get involved? This would be a good place for you to start. So that will be Sunday, February the 24th, where the Tony will be leading that class, it will be five weeks. 
There's a sign-up sheet on the back table. So please sign up for that class. Then, this a week from today, Sunday, February the 3rd, is a spaghetti fundraiser dinner for the senior class of New Hope Christian Academy. Please sign up on the back table for that. Brother David. It, it does. Because when I printed this Friday, it was January. But since this came off the press, uh, the powers that be made an executive decision and it's been changed. Okay. Yes, sir. So that did not happen today. Uh, so next Sunday is the spaghetti dinner. Next Sunday is also a workers meeting and a business meeting at the 6 o'clock hour. So if you uh, are a worker in the church in any capacity, you want to be a worker, a helper in the church in any capacity. Come to the meeting next, Friday, next Saturday, Sunday at 6 o'clock. Bring some sandwiches and snack foods. And we're also going to have a business meeting and take care of a couple issues that we need to address that you'll see there in your bulletin. Miss Purefoy, wave your hands. Praise Jesus, Miss Purefoy. Miss Purefoy has tickets to the Valentine Banquet. To the Valentine Banquet, so we encourage you to participate in that $13. Right now we have, including Mike and I, six people going. Yeah, it'll jump. It'll, it'll jump. We usually have somewhere around 80. So uh, please see Miss, J Miss Jerry and get your tickets. If you love your wife, you'll buy a ticket for her too. They're just $13 a person. There's also a sign-up sheet on the back table. If you would like to have a copy of your 2012 giving record, please sign your name on the back table so Miss Weir can make sure that she gets that to you. And uh, uh, the other announcements, I'll let you read for yourself. They're in the bulletin. There are several of them. If you have any questions about anything, uh, Ask, uh, let's see. No, just call the church office and, uh, and we'll answer your questions. And there's several sign, I think there's six sign up sheets on the back table. So check the resource table if there's something there that you want to be a part of, and please uh, sign up for that. All right, let's stand together with our songbook number 463. Song number 463, if you want to use your songbook. Yes, sir. Got any first time visitors? Brother John is anxiously awaiting to give a welcome pack to anyone who is a first time visitor. So if you're a first time visitor and you don't feel too intimidated, raise your hand. And then Brother John won't feel awkward walking around with this packet in his hand. Anyone uh, here for the first time? that wants to receive this packet that does not have $100 in it. Where they at? Somebody over here. Brother Chuck, we're trying to be dignified here. I'm just trying to get out of that. I'm just trying to get out of that. I'm just trying to See, this is what happens when you just come to a church and then just grill people. See, I see how you get out of here. Yes, quickly. So let's try to get back on track uh, with number 463 when the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair.
blessing on our offer this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have of giving to you. We pray that you might bless both the gift and the giver this morning. And uh, Lord, pray that these monies might be uh, used wisely to minister to people in this area, locally and around the world. And uh, Lord, we just uh, ask your blessing on this service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. And let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God that we have in our possession. We thank you for a pastor that is, spends time with you and spends time in prayer and preaches the word of God. And Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit might speak to hearts and go from person to person and help us to be attentive to the Holy Spirit's working and draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I watched you die 
having been here this morning, let me make just a couple of acknowledgments before we get started. Uh, first of all, it's good to see Ms. Linda Smith uh, back this morning. Had, had a open heart surgery, and she is recovering swimmingly. And thank the Lord for um, what they're able to do now and for His uh, mercy during that whole thing. What a blessing, blessing that is. We've been praying for her. Also, Bobby Brandon is here this morning. And he has had his stint in the hospital as well. We're glad that um, that all of that uh, came through. And so, uh, thank you for all your prayers in that regard. Brother Mark Bailey is here, Amen. our missionary with uh, Helping Hands Ministry. And um, and I need to ask you, well, first of all, let me thank you for bringing all the supplies and, uh, and that kind of thing. But let me also ask you if you can to help. He has a jug on the back table. Stop by and meet him. Uh, there are some needs on the back table. And he has constant needs as far as um, needs with fuel and with upkeep. He's trying to buy a new camper for his truck. Um, and he supplies different missionaries and, um, and groups with, um, for example, he brought us a freezer today. Amen. And uh, so uh, that they have and different people kind of use him to, uh, to get their needs met. So please, uh, I'm asking you if you would just stop by the table, uh, put some money in that jug and help him if you can with his mission. Thank you so much for what you've done already. Now, in our passage this morning, John chapter number 13, verse number 38, you have this conversation between Pilate and Jesus about truth. And uh, so Pilate wants to know, are you a king? Uh, because if so, you're kind of on my turf. You're in my way. And, um, and he says, well, if I was an earthly king, then my people would fight, and they wouldn't allow me to be given over. And, um, and uh, so they have another conversation about truth, and finally Pilate just says, look, stop. What is truth? What is truth? What is the truth? And unbeknownst to him, he was looking at truth. Uh, the Bible says he is, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But today, it's, there, I, I've been, um, the church membership class we've been putting together, and actually we're going to start it this morning, but God has kind of taken us in another direction I'm really excited about. I've been talking to a lot of churches, making a lot of trips, talking to different pastors and churches and looking at their, their uh, organizational setup. And the Lord has really blessed us here at the Old Baptist Church. And a lot of things going on, a lot of people growing in their Christian life. And we want this to be a place to where uh, you can grow. And whatever the next step is in your Christian life, that you can take that step. Even if you're not a Christian, we want this to be a place where you're comfortable making that step of Christianity. And so I've been talking to a lot of different people. And, uh, and it's amazing, some churches have very hard lines that they've drawn. And this is the way it ought to be done. And, uh, and of course, if your argument is weak, what we as pastors do is we add the little phrase, bless God, to it, so it really has some authority behind it. So this is how it ought to be, bless God. I'm like, oh, don't get a God involved, because I, I really don't think He is. But even in that, when I'm talking about what should a church look like, how should a church be structured, what does God plan for the church, what does God plan for us, then the question has to be, what is truth? Because I guarantee you that, that many of you have been to churches that were very different than this church. That many of you have been to churches that said, this is the way you ought to do it. And churches who said, no, this is the way you ought to do it. And people who say, this is the way you ought to live. And people say, no, this is the way you ought to live. And this is what the Christian life looks like. No, people said, no, this is what the Christian life looks like. And so today, uh, when we're talking about being what God has called us to be, we talked about being real. We talked about being honest. And this morning, we're going to talk about being a truth seeker. Being a truth seeker. Now, Pilate asked the question, what is truth? I mean, you tell me. What's right? What's wrong? Understand by way of introduction, you do what you do because of what you believe to be true. What you embrace as truth defines what you do. For example, if I would have said this morning, we're going to give everybody who comes in $1,000, then the majority of poor city who believed it would be here. Right? That's how it works. You do what you do because you believe what you believe. Therefore, you need to learn to be someone who seeks the truth. Now today, in our society, you will hear a lot of people say that truth is relative. That is, truth for you may not be truth for someone else. And let me say this about that. Truth is always going to be what truth is. 
Truth doesn't change for anybody. It doesn't change for you. Somebody said, we hear Mr. Denise talk, uh, singing the song about the judgment and how every knee one day will bow. I was talking to somebody this week and we were talking about how everyone is either a believer or a pre-believer. Okay? Because there will be a day when you'll realize that God is right and God is true. Even if it's the day where you meet Him face to face. Amen. You don't have to believe something for something to be true. People say, well, don't I believe in God? So? <laughs> you don't have to believe in God for God to be real. Everybody has a right to their own opinion. But you do not have a right to your own truth. Because truth is just truth. Let's use, for example, the law of gravity. We can go up to the top of this building in this morning, and you can say, Brother Tony, I don't believe in the law of gravity. I believe I can step off in this building and not fall. And then what I'll do is I'll give you one of them. And you will see that your belief system had nothing to do with the truth. The person who jumps off will fall at the same rate of speed as the people who as the person who believes and jumps off. Except the person who believes will probably not jump off. <laughs> See, the importance of what you believe, what you believe. This is what David said about his belief system and how he was going to live his life. Psalm chapter number 86 and verse number 11 says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. <laughs> Unite my heart to fear thy name. He says, Lord, teach me what's right, and I'll walk in your truth. How many times in your own life have you said, I'll be all right, and then come to find out it wouldn't be all right? <coughs> It didn't turn out all right. I was having a conversation a couple weeks ago. And someone asked me and said, Brother Tony, um, and, and, and let me say this. Truth, here's one reason we don't like truth. We don't like to get down to what the truth really is because it affects what we really want to do or think or act in a certain area. Someone asked me, said, Brother Tony, uh, do you believe that people are born homosexual? And so we had a conversation. I said, do I personally believe it? No, I don't believe that people are born that way. However, I am entitled to my own opinion. I can't tell you and it can't be proven one way or the other. Okay? It can't be. Well then, if people can be born that way, then do you believe it's wrong? Yes, I do. Well, isn't that judgmental? No, it's not. The judgment has already been made. It depends on where you find the truth. This is the time, the, the uh, anniversary of Roe v. Wade, I know it's very controversial, and, um, and a lot of people are questioned about it, but here's the thing. You are entitled to your own opinion. What you're not entitled to is your own truth. And there is an absolute truth. And what does God say on the subject of that? That when uh, you are conceived, that God knows you at that time. Amen. Now, I know it's uncomfortable, and I know that we don't like to take hard stands, but it's not. That's not what being judgmental is, because God has already made the judgment. Your only judgment is whether or not you decide something is true or right or just. And so, regardless of what you believe on homosexuality or abortion this morning, because that's not what we're talking about, what we are talking about is you finding the truth. Is it possible to find the truth, and where does truth come from? And so that's what we want to talk about this morning. Now listen, if you don't agree with me this morning, you're still, hey, I was trying to call you this week. <laughs> Don't leave. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, but it is important that you learn to identify and see. <laughs> Just my wife, my wife and I have hand signals that where she can help me in the service. The new one that I figured out not long ago was this one. I was like, I don't play the guitar. That means your flies over. <laughs> but, but if you see my wife on the front row, which is why she sits on the front row going like this, that means don't tell that story. This means, yeah, you're on the right track. This means sum it up. The one that she just did, I mean, don't chase rabbits. <laughs> and, <laughs> but I'm sorry, this changed my mind. I forget. But listen, it is very important that you decide this. If you knew the truth, would you do something about it? Okay, where can I find truth? If I know the truth, will I do something about it? Are you willing to, if you find out that you're wrong about something, are you willing to change your mind? Where does truth come from? How can we find truth? Well, let's look, number one, this morning. 
Number one, life experience. Can you find truth in life experience? People say, well, Tony, I believe what I can see and what I can do, what I can experience, what I can examine. That's what I believe. Can you find truth in life experience? Before you nod your head, yes, let me encourage you with this. No. <laughs> you cannot base what is fundamentally true based on what you have experienced. Because experiences can lead you astray. Now let me say this. Truth, real truth, can be experienced. But not everything that you experience is real truth. There are a lot of things today that we experience that are not based in truth. For example, what if you are experiencing the feeling of euphoric love for someone else? Well, it's getting time for Valentine's Banquet. Get a ticket. <coughs> If you can't afford a ticket, get a ticket. Okay? You can't afford a ticket, we'll pick it up. Get a ticket from Miss Pureport. If you can get a ticket and need to pay it later, do that. But get a ticket because it's all about love. And I love love. I love talking about love. Um, uh, back there, my, my bachelor's degree is in uh, uh, psychology and Christian counseling. When I first started as pastor, that was my worst fear that somebody would call me and ask me about uh, relationships, and I was, what, I think like 26 years old or something. And that's exactly what uh, couples wanted to ask a 26 year old about their relationship. So I was praying, Lord, please don't just take it easy on me in this term of relationship counseling. And the first week I was here, um, a couple called me, and I went out to go make a visit at Lake Cherokee, and they were chunking deer heads and BCRs and screaming and whatnot. And I just said, Look, I won't have to go. And when things calm down a little bit, maybe we can sit down and talk. And I went on and told Rachel, I'm going back to school. <laughs> I need to know something about what tells me about love. So let's assume that you are experiencing this euphoric love for somebody. Anybody ever known somebody who's experienced that? Just, just the world revolves around you. I can't breathe when I'm around you. All the worst parts of The Bachelor. <laughs> so <laughs> I hate that show. But anyway, all of that stuff, right? Your feet, you don't feel like your feet are touching the ground, blah, blah, blah. Comes wedding day. The wedding day, you feel the same way. But just something happened the next week that your spouse turned into Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. They just, just started looking to you like, Ugh. oh, congratulations on y'all's wedding. <laughs> They just got married. Congratulations to them. But have you ever seen that happen where somebody, oh, Brother Tony, I just fell out of love. Oh, you fell out of love. No, you didn't fall out of love. What you did is you experienced something that was not based in truth. And we've all done it. Paul did it in Acts chapter number uh, 9, verse number 1 through 6. You can see where Paul is a very religious man. At this time, the Apostle Paul's name is Saul. God has not changed his name as of yet, but his name is Saul. And Saul was running around doing religious stuff. He was raised as a Pharisee. He was raised as a very religious person. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees, the Bible says. He was an important guy. He was a religious guy. His life, he was in ministry work. He went around doing religious stuff, which at this time included killing Christians. But he thought he was right about it. He thought this is what is right. Because why? Because this is what I experienced as a child. I was told it was right as a child. This is what I've experienced in my own life. So this is what must be happening and what must be right. But what happens in um, verse number um, 3, the Bible says, And as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And as he fell to the earth, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me do? Now listen to what he said. Who are you, Lord? That's what he said. Now Saul thought he was already serving the Lord. There are a lot of people who think they're going to heaven because they filled 16 plus inches of a church pew for 16 plus years. Hey, you know Christ? You're going to heaven when you die? Oh yeah, I go to church. Oh yeah, I've been baptized. Oh yeah, one day I did the Holy Spirit, turned myself around. 
There are a lot of people who believe in something because they've experienced something, and it's not so. So you cannot base the majority of what is true on what you have experienced. It doesn't make it so. I have a, a good pastor friend who told me the Lord is leading me into XYZ ministry. He was there two weeks, and he was doing something else. I mean, guess what? Whatever you experienced that make you think that's what you were supposed to be doing was either wrong or you're doing, you're living outside of God's will, one or the other. Now be very careful about what you believe God is leading you to do. Make sure that it's based on truth. We'll talk about how to do that here in just a second. Number two, how about other people? Can you experience truth by other people? What other people say and what other people teach? The Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. I'm going to swallow my candy. <laughs> <clears throat> In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Um, that he that listens to wise counsel is wise. He that will not listen to counselors is a fool. Can you take my word for it this morning? You take my word for truth? Do you trust me this morning to tell you truth? Man, here. He's going to get a creak in his neck. He's like, no. All right? Ask my wife. The odds are you think I'm more correct about stuff than she does. Okay? Because we're together all the time. I love the lovely towns of Miss Rachel, but one day I asked her, if I make a decision in the forest that nobody hears, am I still wrong? And I don't remember that time I was right about something here. Listen, you can listen to wise counsel, and it's important to listen to wise counsel, but understand this, not everything you hear is right. I was up at the hardware store one day in North City, and my, when my dad was pastor, and uh, I'm the oldest son, and then my dad, my my brother is the youngest in our family, and um, I was up at the hardware store, and they said, "How's the pastor's son doing?" And I said, "I guess okay. Which one?" And uh, they said, "The oldest." And I was thinking, "Well, that's me. I, uh, I guess he's doing all right." And they said, "Well, tell him we're praying for him. We heard he had cancer, and, and uh, we, we've just really been praying for him." I thought to myself, well, that, that's something right there. I mean, you go down and get a pound of nails and you get diagnosed with cancer at the hardware store. <laughs> that's kind of serious business. But it's not like they were making it up. They had heard from a friend who heard it from a friend who. Right? And so we hear what we hear. We experience what we experience. We assume that it's true. <coughs> How many times have you experienced that? There was a prophet in Scripture in 1 Kings Chapter number 13, who experienced that, God had told this man, I want you to go and prophesy against this kingdom, and then I want you to turn right around, and I want you to come home. And I don't want you to stop, I don't want you to eat, I don't want you to drink, prophesy, go home. Now listen to what happens. The Bible says, and um, someone came to him and said unto him, I am a prophet, also as thou art. And an angel spake to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee, and into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Verse number 19. So he went back, and went with him, and did eat bread and drink water in his house. And as it came to pass, that as they sat at table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. <laughs> now, the prophet that brought him back didn't hear from the Lord the first time, but he's hearing this time. And what is he hearing? The Bible says, And he cried unto the man of God, that man that he brought back from Judah. Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandments which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came back, and hast eaten bread, and drunk water in this place, um, of the which the Lord did say unto thee, Eat no bread, and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come down to the sepulchre of thy fathers. He said, You ain't going to make it. The very one that said, hey, I'm a prophet like you are. Angel told me to tell you, come and eat at my house. So he went, then he prophesied while they were sitting at the table. Because you came and ate at my house, you're going to die. He ends up going home, the lion ends up uh, tearing him on the way home and he died. <coughs> but listen, he heard from a man who said, I'm a prophet like you're a prophet. Here's what's right. This is what's true. <coughs> and he paid the ultimate price for it. And let me encourage you to do this. Do not take the word of New Hope Baptist Church. If it makes you feel better, I don't take your word. <laughs> Some of you. I don't take your word for good morning. <laughs> you can ignore it. Listen, you can't take somebody's word for truth. 
How many of us believe what we believe just because we've been told? Just because we've been taught it? Be very careful what you tell your children. Go ahead and call your children stupid. Let me tell you what will happen. They'll believe it. Go ahead and tell them they're worthless. They'll believe it. Be very careful the words that come out of your mouth. There's something very important about teaching people the right thing. But you don't take what you hear as ultimate truth. It's a very dangerous thing. You're a prophet died for it. Also, what you see. How about that? Can I believe what I see? Sometimes yes. Sometimes no. One of my favorite passages, I've been reading through the book of Exodus, one of my favorite passages about the trip of the Israelite people is when Moses comes and God tells Moses, he says, I want you to go to Pharaoh. And Moses is like, I don't want to go to Pharaoh. And he says, well, because I don't speak well. Because why should he listen to me? And God said, what's in your hand? And he says, well, that's a staff. He says, throw it down. I'm going to show you something. So he casts his staff down and becomes a serpent. He says, now grab it by the tail. That would push the, the level of my personal commitment to the Lord up there. But anyway, he says, grab the snake. So Moses grabs the snake and becomes a staff. He says, so as, a, as an evidence, one of the evidences that I'm speaking through you, I'm going to allow you to do this. And that will show favor that the truth is, I am working on your behalf. And so that's what he does. But listen to what happens as he goes into Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 7, verse number 10. And Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down the rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. That's pretty serious business right there. As evidence that God is who God is, I'm going to cast my rod down and it's going to become a serpent. Look at the very next verse. Then Pharaoh also called his wise men and sorcerers. Now, uh, the Egyptians of Egypt. And also they did in like manner with their enchantments. You know what happened? Moses says, God is speaking to me. If you don't believe it, watch this. Pharaoh said, oh, pretty impressive. Well, watch this. Hey, y'all come over here. All of them cast their down. There's all kinds of snakes on the floor then. Wait a minute. If you're going to judge truth by what you see, and the truth is that God was backing Moses, then why did it not, why didn't it play out? Now let me say this, God is always right, and His truth will always win. Because let's see what happened in verse number, um, chapter number 7, verse number 21 and 22. You can read it at your leisure. Um, we won't read it all, but here, um, uh, Moses told to strike the water and it's going to turn to blood. So that's what he does. Then Pharaoh calls his magicians in. They do the same thing. They turn water to blood. So Moses is thinking, listen, you serve God, I serve God, we all serve God. This plurality of gods. And that's what people say today. You serve your God and I'll serve my God. We'll just choose. And, 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 and uh, going to heaven is like going to Chicago. You can go one way and I'll go another way. And we'll all just get there in the end. Well, no, we won't just get there in the end. And when you die, you're not going to Chicago. There's one way according to Scripture. And that, by the way, is not judgmental. It's just a judgment. It's just so. And so anyway, the water's turned to blood. The magicians turned the water to blood. In Exodus 8, verse number 6, Moses said, oh yeah, watch this. There'll be frogs everywhere. There'll be frogs in your bed. There'll be frogs in your oven. There'll be frogs in your bath. You're going to have frogs everywhere. Pharaoh said, hey, magicians, y'all come here and make me some frogs. Boop, there's frogs. How they do it? They were magicians. They weren't working with the miraculous. They were working in magic. Russ Scott does that stuff. <laughs> Good. He can he has little sponge balls and he does all these little tricks and stuff, and it's really awesome, but it's a trick. So the magicians here at Pharaoh, they're doing a trick. But it looks just like Moses' trick. So, frogs and frogs. That, uh, verse number 17, chapter number 8. Moses said, okay, watch this. He takes some dust from the ground, he throws it in the air, and there's lice all over everybody. Now, that's a trick I just did not see. <laughs> but this is the trick, right? It's not a trick, it's just a miraculous. God's showing, I'm God. And so Moses does what God tells him to do. There's lice everywhere. The Bible says, Pharaoh calls his magicians in verse number 18, so that they, uh, were, with their enchantment, might bring forth lies, but they could not. Now, wait a minute. What's going on now? Now we've gotten to a place where Pharaoh's magicians can't keep up. 
with the miraculous. Now you might see the world and you might hear that God promises you certain things and this abundant Christian life and you may see the world out there laughing like they have the abundant Christian life but what you don't see is the difficulty and the problems that come after it. The Bible says the way of the wise are, are rejoicing and God adds no problems with it. So you can go and fake what God has to offer but there will be a time when you can't fake it anymore. Wait, there's more. In chapter number 9, in verse number 10, as Pharaoh still fails to listen, God through, uh, through Moses puts boils on people. Or they say in these texts, it's boils. Right? People start getting these big sores all over them. So Pharaoh calls his magician. And this is what the Bible says. Verse number 11. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the bulls. <laughs> not only could they not keep up with the miraculous, now they can't show up. Now you can try, to, and the Bible's clear, you can serve one or two masters. You have to decide what truth is. Rather, you can't decide what truth is, you have to discover what truth is. And you may think that this world has what you're looking for, but you'll find that it's shallow and empty and disappointing every time. And so as you seek what truth is, you seek the truth of God, you find that the sustaining of the miraculous is indeed in this life possible. And so that's what happens here with the magicians. Now what did they see? At first they saw the same kind of, of, of miraculous things they thought. Then it proved to be untrue. What I'm telling you is that just because you see something doesn't mean it's so. For example, I see exercise commercials on TV all the time with the same uh, with the same people. Same guy was on the Gazelle commercial. Now he's on the Ab Lounge commercial. Right? You see it, but it doesn't really work like that. Right? When you see the George Foreman Grill being advertised, does it really taste like it looked like on the commercial? I you when it I mean it looked good. I told you last week I bought a hamburger from. Um, uh, uh, or a sandwich from a Burger King one time and literally had to carry it back up there to look at the picture. Right? I ordered it based on the picture. What I saw, what I got was something completely different and much smaller. <laughs> so you can't judge what is true based on what you see. How about on what you feel? Truth can produce feeling, but feeling do not indicate truth. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 26, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. How about this? How can it be wrong? It feels so bad. Well, you just keep on down that road, you'll find out. Keep on pursuing puppy love, you'll end up, end up in a dog's life. Right? It just feels right. It just seems right to me. And I love when people come in and you go know, back to church and they just feel well. It just feels like the Lord's doing something. There. And that's awesome. And I appreciate the, the, the sentiment. But you don't need to live your life based on how you feel. Many times people will come and they'll ask me questions about what is right and wrong. And they'll, they'll, they'll add to it. Well, Brother Tony, I just really feel that blah, blah, blah. And I appreciate it. But you may have got bad pizza or something. <laughs> I don't know what that feeling is. It can be gas. Words I just I really feel like I need to confront this person. Well, no, listen, what you need to do is act on truth. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. It may seem and feel right and still be wrong. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 30, verse number 12, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation that says, I am a Christian, I know the Lord, and they're as lost as they can possibly be. But they really feel like it. They are. Don't base your salvation on what you feel or what you think. Base it rather on truth. So there are two sources of truth, and we're going to touch on these, and then we're going to dismiss these two sources of truth. First of all, God. Now I know that sounds very fluffy, and I know it doesn't sound like something you can really apply to your life, but what you have to do in this world is decide 
who is right and who is wrong. Who is right and who is wrong. Because I'm going to tell you something. God and the world are diametrically opposed in thought process. And in every area of life. And let me ask you this. How many decisions have you made this last week based on what you think God thinks about that? Listen, God is true. And it doesn't matter if we believe it or not even. In, in uh, Romans chapter 3, verse number 3, the Bible says, For what if some believe not? What happens if God gives us truth and some people don't believe? Well, the Bible says, um, uh, Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true and every man be a liar. What do we need to understand? What do I need to understand about truth? God, the creator of heaven and earth, is right. God, the creator of heaven and earth, is right. Not me. Let me be a liar. But let God be right about your family. Let, your right, let God be right about your salvation. Let God be right about everything in your life. About your purpose for life. Let God be right. The, now where do we find what God thinks? We find that from God's Word. A decision that you have to make is whether or not you believe God's Word is true. Now you can't believe that God's Word is a good book if you don't believe it's absolute truth. Because it itself claims to be truth. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Lord, your truth. Sanctify people. Change people with your truth. Your word is truth. Every word of God is pure. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord are true. Enlightening the eyes. It goes on and on and on about the truth of God and God's word being true. And here's what I'm trying to get to. Listen, in your life and in the, the things that you're going through in your life and whatever the situation is in your life or whatever it is that you're trying to figure out, understand that the Christian, how the Christian responds and how the Christian acts toward life is based on this truth. Okay? So, let me give you a scenario of the lovely and talented Rachel Pierce and the other guy is coming. <laughs> I wake up in the morning and Rachel is having a bad day. Now when you're married, you become one flesh. That means if my flesh is having a bad day, I'm having a bad day. Okay? That's just the truth. It's just a bad day. I love the town for Rachel Pierce. She burns my toes. She is just being persnickety. She's messing up my day. Morning's the best part of my day. I don't need you messing up the very first part of the best part of my day. You're not doing that right. <laughs> now, that's the facts. What is the truth about how I should behave? You see, in a worldly concept, the truth is, you're treating me bad, I'll treat you bad back. And I'll treat you worse, and you'll learn a lesson. Which, by the way, <laughs> had a man one day tell me I'm tired of going home every time I walk in the door it's a fight I said how many of you won I said I don't think I've ever won one but the facts say don't let her treat you like that the feelings say you made me mad <coughs> what I've seen other people do is bite her head off teach her a lesson let her know the truth of God is love is patient Love is kind. Now if I act in that godly kind of love, then I'm standing on the truth of God's Word. But how many times have you as a Christian or you've heard somebody else say, well I know what the Bible says, but why did you just eliminate it? You know what that conjunction is? That conjunction means, I know that the Bible is right, but I ain't doing it. Well then you don't know it. To know it not to do is not to know it. So what we need to understand as Christians, what we need to decide we're going to do, if we're going to be what God has designed us to be, we need to stand on the truth of His Word. Brother Tony, what do you feel about abortion? I just have to take what God said. Somebody asked me one time, um, sometimes churches argue about easy believism and repentance, and, and what if, I had a pastor one day say, what do you believe about repentance? I said, uh, I 
guess I'll just have to say what God said. Unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Yeah, but in the Greek, I don't care if in the Greek the word umbrella means hamburger. I just tell you, Jesus said, in, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Some guys ask, what do you believe about lordship salvation? I don't know. I just have to say what the Bible says, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? Yeah, but lordship salvation means, I want to get into semantics with you. All I know is that God is true. And I don't know anything like I should know. I have to take God's word for it. So in how I act and how I live is based on what I believe. If you really don't believe in the truth of God's word, you really won't act like you should. So when we talk about becoming this year and being what God designed you to be, you can only do that if you're willing to seek the truth. Not your truth. You don't have a truth. You have an opinion. I had a kid one time tell me their plan. They didn't know what they were going to do. So you don't have a plan. You have an idea. You may have a lot of ideas, and you may have a lot of opinions, but there's only one truth. And God's just right about it. And you'll, you'll be amazed at how your life begins to change as you start to accept that God's just right, that God is true. Today, as we stand, what's God going to say? 155. Number 155. <coughs> if you don't know today that you're a Christian, you can know for sure. The Bible says you can. If you don't know, if you know, there's truth for that. If you're going through something in your life, what we do as a church body is we just get together and decide what God's truth has to do with how we're living right now. We can help you in some way. The altar's open, whatever the need is. If you need you, come. Always say. Have my love.